good day to one and all this is dr sibramna of inoindices.com so i'll be presenting for this particular week beginning asian session live market analysis so today it is 19th of august between 5 and 5:30 gmt i will give the forecast the expected market moves for this particular week starting from 19th to today and ends by friday 23rd august so besides giving the forecast for this particular week the session wise forecast in each session how exactly the market might behave as an expected market moves i will also give the levels in which the currencies could trade as the forecast then besides we will also do the market reading using our normal technique that note down the initial lows and the highs and try to find out what sort of moves they are making and that depends upon the volume and the nature of the traders taken the positions whether the traders have taken neck long or neck short positions accordingly they will try to make some quick moves in the market and try to earn from the traders who are emotionally influenced so we try to do the market reading and still in spite of the forecast and the market reading we can go wrong as human so we try to use the trading strategy to limit the risk and maximize the re- reward in our trades so these are all the uh, concepts i am going to explain to you during this particular web let us start with it of the expected market moves for this particular week 19 to 23rd of august so this is the fourth week of the month so swing and very quick rise moves are expected so what sort of moves we could see and today is 19th august during that of the japanese session we will come across subdued swings so they'll be making nominal swings in the market now you see the net changes in the case of euro gbp usd yen usd chf all are just showing single digits excepting australian dollar which is showing about 27 pips positive net change and you find the contrary in move here euro is showing negative net change usd yen is showing positive uh, net change nominally uh, it's a normal move then usd yen i mean gbp and also usd chf showing one big positive net change it's a contrary move so they are making only a nominal swing so that is what anticipated during this japanese session then afterwards during start of the european session they are expected to make a dip and probably make a downward stop and below that of the initial low and then start making the rise then again during the start of the us session they could make a dip and firm up move so weak beginning false move will be very subdued on the downside so they may cut the initial lows by a few pips not a big drop or something like that normally they do it during the weak beginning false move but they will be holding the gained levels from the last week then tomorrow japanese session swing and quick rise move is expected so we can buy today during the dip near that of the initial low or below that of the initial low when they make a brief downward stop and and try to hold it for the entire week if you want otherwise you can just book profit during that of the swing and quick rise a swing and firm and swing and rise moves tomorrow then wednesday they will make a dip during start of the japanese session and make a small firming up and again a dip during start of the european session and firm up and then start making further rise during the us session then you can buy it either on wednesday during that of the japanese session dip or the european session dip and try to wait for the us session to close the position then again thursday you will come across the towards weekend the last two days they will try to make either way moves to start with swing and slide then swing and quick rise so during the slide we can buy and hold it and quickly book profit during the, the quick rise or the firming up during us session then on friday 
they are expected to make swing and quick rise, then higher level swings and further rise, then swing and quick rise. And this Friday, we should be seeing a lot of spikes happening in the market. And last week, I was expecting on Friday the upward quick move, but during start of the U.S. session, they just made the quick rise and subsequently started making the slide, indicating that they have found a lot of traders taken the breakout long positions, so they want them to liquidate the long positions before making further rise. So that is what you find, that they formed the low or near Friday low. They are holding it now. They made a brief downward stop and to 1.3318 and 1.5609, etc. In the case of GBP, a nominal downward stop and they made it. And then subsequently, they formed up again. They accumulated the buy positions against what they have sold near that of 1.3385 and also 1.5655. So this week, the market is expected to make the weak beginning false move today, then followed by that of the quick rise moves. And if you are a swing trader, then every quick rise, you can book profit and re-enter during the dips. Following this particular forecast model explained with regard to these three sessions of each day, 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd of August, each day you can just find out what is expected to happen during the session and try to take the positions accordingly. My humble suggestion will be do buy and sell trades in all four majors because they are expected to make the contrarian move in the market suddenly. And don't think that when euro rises, USDCHF has to drop. Last week, many were commenting like that, but they have been holding it. Then next week, 26th to 30th August, it will be the last week of the month. So, you know that last week they are expected to make the volatile moves, but this time they are expected to make the upward quick trending move and then make last two days the volatile moves on the month and time. 29th and 30th, they are expected to trend reverse, expected to make the trend reversal moves before the start of the next month, September. So this week, you will come across the upward trending move, so buy and sell trades can be initiated, but not a breakout trade of buy after the rise. The ideal way will be whenever they make a downward stop and try to take a buy and keep the hedging order to limit the risk. If it is hedged, you just watch whether hedging is making profit for 30 minutes or it is making loss. If it is making loss, then understand that during a downward stop and you got hedged, so you can simply close the hedge with a few pips loss, one or two pips loss, and keep another hedging order close by. Then once they start gaining the levels in the market, you can keep stop at entry. So this way, you will be able to buy near that of the low whenever they are making a downward stop. And when they are making an upward stop or an extended move on the upside, in order to book profit, you can also book profit. So my humble suggestion will be trade along with that of the players and not by the sentiment what they create in the market. Because we know very well the players create the market sentiment and act against that of the traders who have committed positions based on the sentiments which is visible in the market. Now, with regard to the range in which the currencies are expected to trade in this particular week, euro could have a possible low of 1.3300, which is only arithmetically derived levels. So you may not be able to calculate the exact turnaround points. So far, they are shown 1.3321. And the high is 1.3675 expected. So far, they are shown 1.3343. Then, in the case of GBP, 1.5600 could be the low, and they have shown the low so far, 1.5618 for this particular week. Then, 1.5925 could be the high. They could make for the rise in the case of GBP. That could be visible rise. And so far, they have shown the high, 1.5638. Okay. Okay, 3.7 was the initial high and they just made one more pip rise. And in the case of USDN, 
97 could be the low and so far they have shown 97 36 so they may come close to the 97 or make a brief downward stop and intraday as a trigger to induce zero and gv to go up and later on they are expected to gain the levels also in the case of the usd yen so the high could be 101.25 so far they have shown 97.86 then in the case of ch 92 50 is the expected low 9257 they shown initially and now they have formed 9254 as the low and 9278 is the so far shown high but they could rise it up to 9525 then canadian dollar if you see slowly they are making the gains and it is the estimated low could be 1.0300 and they showed 1.0320 as initial low then subsequently they just breached the low 1.0316 so around 1.03 or when they make a brief down stop and you can take a buy and they are expected to slowly gain the levels to 1.06 so far they have shown 1.0343 in australian dollar slowly it has gained momentum and 0.9175 could be the low they are shown so far 9182 and 9450 could be the high and they are shown 9218 initially and then gone up 9233 so all indicates that they want to make an upward move as an upward stop and, and then make a slide again during the european session so excepting australian dollar all other currencies are expected to make the upward swing Australian dollar is also expected to make an upward swing but it is expected to uh, make downward move before making next rise so hardly every time you will find it will be gaining about 50 pips net change each time so when it gains from 92 to 93 it may come down to 92 and then go to 9350 that way it will try to gain as a net gain of 50 pips when euro and gbv are continuously gaining more levels so i explain to you the expected market moves for this particular week and also the levels use them as the reference levels and use the expected market moves as a guiding factor in your trading analysis or the the market analysis and try to use your common sense also while taking trades because in the name of technical trade sometimes you come across certain uh, the extreme levels are shown probably it might give a profit uh, when you buy it around 1.3378 and thinking that it will definitely touch 1.34 and then come down in case if they don't touch 1.34 and come down then you get struck with a breakout trade because m- the many of the technical analysts found that breakout trades are safer in the market but the players are now proving that such breakout trades are very risky and you know that after breaking the high they go up nominally say about 30 35 pips and anybody takes a buy on the breakout trade above that of the high set for the day they try to drop and go below that of the low that is what they had done it on friday they go, go below that of the low because they know very well where the stops are so it showed very clearly that many of the traders have taken a buy position above that of the initial high and kept the stops below that of the low so what they had done it they just hit the breakout buy positions and gone up only about 10 to 15 pips and suddenly dropped and start making the downward move below that of the low and hit the stops then if the if the range is very high say 70 to 80 pips if the stop is around 90 pips then if it is hit then you lose quite a lot of money so please understand that simply at any given time you cannot go in for a breakout trade so because the market has already gained in the case of euro and gbp many people think that it might drop only if it goes above that of the resistance and stay there then we can go for a buy position but it is not like that so when you compare it to that of the previous levels like 1.28 1.30 1.30 1.30 1.30 1.30 1.30 1.30 1.30 1.30 1.30 1.30 1.30 1.30 1.30 1.30 1.30 1.30 1.30 1.30 1.30 
or 1.25 for that matter, euro looks very expensive. And similarly, on the other side, when you refer to that of 1.45, 1.39 or 1.60, the all-time high, then it looks, it is attractive. So it is only a market perception. No, you just make a relative comparison with that of the odds. So on the extreme high or the extreme low. So it might appear like a technical analysis. And a technical analysis is the one, sometimes it becomes redundant. And suppose a human being, 50% of the body is kept in ice and 50% of the body is kept in steam. Then statistics says that he is enjoying a warmthness of 50 degrees. But you will be just really undergo the torture on either side. So blindly following the statistics may lead to disastrous trends. So we have to use our common sense also. That is very, very important. So try to understand that after the rise buying it, after the drop selling it, they may look technically possible, but the profit might be about 20 to 25 pips. But if they suddenly reverse, the loss could be about 90 to 100 pips. Keep that in mind and then take your trading decisions. It is only my humble suggestions. Being a statistics professor, I know how statistics is being blindly followed by many of the traders without understanding the significance of each and every analysis. Now, coming to that of the initial lows and the highs set for the day as a market reading technique. So, Euro formed the low 1.3321 and 1.3343. They are not breached. In such a narrow range, so don't commit any positions. Only if the spread becomes more than 40 pips, try to take a position. When they do a downward stop and take a buy, when they do an upward stop and you can take a sell and quickly book profit during that of the next downward move. Today, they are expected to make small slides. Then, in the case of GBP, 1.5618 is a low, 1.5638 is a high. So, you find it is again in a narrow range. And USDN is making a little bit wider swings. 97.36 is the low, 97.86 is the high. So, about 50 pips spread is seen. And when they... They are in the middle level. When they come closer to low or make a downward stop and try to take a buy, then you will be able to book profit on the upside. Then in the case of USDCH of 90 to 64, uh, 90 to 54 is the low and 90 to 78 is the high. They are not breached the low or the high. Then in the case of Canadian dollar, 1.0316, they formed as a new low and one point. 0343. So they made a brief downward stop in the case of USD CAD and then come above that of the initial low 1.0320, staying above there for about 20 minutes now. And they are expected to take it up above that of 1.0343. Then Australian dollar one, 0 0.9182 is the low, 9218 is the high, initial high. They just breached and staying. They just made a brief upward stop in 92.33. They went up to and come to 92.03, below that of the initial high. So indicating that they will make a small slide and make a downward stop in, and before making further rise. So they are just acting on that of the commodity pairs to start with in breaching the low and the high. But in the case of Euro GBP, USDN and USDCHF, they are not breached to the low or the high. So wait for them to just make an upward stop and or a downward stop. And depending upon the trader's pending position, they do it. Then accordingly, when they make a downward stop and take a buy and keep 30 pips hedge order, once the position makes profit, keep stop at entry and remove the hedge order and trail the stop in the profit making position. Keep about 45 to 75 pips limit, take profit order. And once the market moves up, the market might either hit your trailing stop or your limit. As a result, you will be able to get the maximum profit out of that single trade. Between trades, you try to give at least 30 minutes time frame to find out whether your profit booking level is making profit or not. If, suppose you have just taken a buy position here and booked the profit, 
Afterwards, that means what you have sold it. 1.35638 at that level you have sold it. And just wait for 30 minutes and see the sell is making profit or not. That means whether the market comes below that of the high. If it is not coming, that means anybody who has taken a buy from uh, from my sell is seeing the profit. And then subsequently understand there is no point in doing a sell when they make about 10 to 15 pips rise. You just wait for them to make a dip during that of the next session start because they always swing and induce the traders to commit wrongly. At that time, try to take a buy and then you'll be able to see profit. Because market gives plenty of trading opportunities. But we think that taking a position at a given line is a given uh, level is very precious. So we do not want to stop it out or we do not want to close it with a small loss when it appears very strongly a wrong trade. Then what happens? We continue to hold the positions for a long time. So a trader needs to understand that when the position is wrong, accept that my study is wrong at this particular point of time. It is better to close the position and relook at the market and re-enter the market. But the overall trend is upward. There is no doubt about it. They will be doing it. But the entry might be slightly higher or you might be keeping a buy limit order and the market may not hit. So you have to always look for the quick moves. So in order to understand the quick moves, how they are making it, so I have given you the timings when they will make quick moves. So each session is subdivided into early, mid and late sessions. And the first one and a half hours from the start of the session is the early session. The last one and a half hours towards the close of the session is the late session. And in between time is the mid session. Then you come across a gap time between sessions, which is called as a gap time. The early and the late sessions, the majors and commodity pairs are handled. Mid sessions, the crosses are handled. Crosses of majors and commodity pairs are handled. At a given time, they take only two pairs and try to make them quick moves. And those two pairs will invariably show more than 40 pips spread between the high and the low. Say now, Australian dollar and yen, they are handling. The rest of the currencies are showing less than 40 pips spread between the high and the low. So identify which pair they are doing. So that means Australian dollar, yen, then Aussie yen crosses. So those pairs are being handled. So you have to understand that. And since it is mid-session, so they will be handling the cross. So if you look into the cross, you will find the spread will be more. Aussie and dollar, uh, sorry, Aussie and cross, you will find more spread when compared to the rest of the pairs. So this is a, you can easily find out what pair they are trying to handle it and accordingly take positions. So follow the market timings. So market timings are given it here, the three sessions of the day, Japanese session, three 0030 to 7 GMT, European session 730 to 13 GMT, US session 1330 to 2030 GMT, and in between 7 to 730 and 13 to 1330 are the gap times. Then after 2030, before the start of the next day, 0030, you find about four hours gap time, and during that time, they make some wild moves in the market. And that is why many of the people wait for Sunday night move from U.S. What how exactly during the, the Japanese session they are expected to make the moves. So normally you come across the upward gap opening or a downward gap opening moves. So they make such moves in order to try to uh, induce the traders to develop the sentiments every week and try to act against those sentiments created. So let me answer to the questions which are asked here. Okay. Vikrant. 
Can you please show the swing slide again? Which to refer it as a swing slide, I'm not able to understand. Or oh, this focus slide. If there is another question, question answers. Okay. Uh, what is your forecast? Short and long term for Indian rupee. It has crossed 62. Okay, as far as Indian I, Indian rupee is concerned, INR is concerned, I explained last time also that they are doing the multi-year trend reversal move and it has breached 62. And see, if the trade has continued to sell, they can continue to rise and accumulate all the positions. And then once the traders become tired of and start making the buys after small dips, then the players know very well that everybody is long. What is the use of rising it further and start making a big drop? So it is not the question of bank interventions, anything which will work. It is a question of traders holding the positions and the players acting against them. So they created the feel in the market that it is unstoppable. That is how they had done it in the case of even Euro and GBP in 2008. Nobody thought that Euro and GBP could, could go to such a high levels. So that's how they had just gained the levels and fooled everybody and started dropping. In a matter of about four to six months, they had gone down all the way to 1.23 in the case of Euro and 1.45 in the case of GBP. And that sort of moves they do it. So we have to be very careful. And it doesn't mean that the economy is bad or something like that. They create all hypes. No? And in a matter of about one week, everything will change. And they will give a different story. And if you ask any economist, can the economic, economic conditions reverse in a matter of few hours, few seconds or few days? Then you will know the truth in that. Uh, then, Philip, knowing your broker time is important for this type of trading? No, there is no need of knowing the broker time. Always go with that of the GMT time frame. See, and the broker's trading platforms, some of the platforms have got the facility to change the time. And they invariably recommend you to change to your local time. Never expect the international market to come to your local time. That is a wrong perception. Once it comes to that local time, then invariably what happens, you know, when you just see that it is late night for you, but the market is still active, you do not know how to adjust yourself. And so you go with that of the market timings, which is an international market, and the market is functioning 24 hours. When the market is functioning 24 hours, it is ideal to track it with GMT time frame, not with the local time. And you know that the players induce or uh, just instruct the platform providers and also their analysts working with that of the platform providers to highlight the New York time, highlight the London open time, London closing time and things like that. So when they use it as experts, immediately the traders think that it is ideal to use such timings. But please be, keep it in mind that following any time frame is not at all important. Following the GMT time frame is the utmost important thing. Local times uh, will not give any sort of indication for you how the market behaves. You just follow this GMT time frame and watch how exactly during the early session, late session, early session, late session, they make quick moves in the market. And suddenly, if you find in the platform, the codes start appearing very fast and fluctuating very fast. And that is how the players use the time frame. This is the time frame used by the other players. So if you are going to trade in line with the other players, we need to read them. We need to understand. We need to find their limitations and trade along with them. And we cannot act against them because they have got a huge money power. Then, yeah. 
then Chow Kier. Are we expecting Euro GBP at a new high this week? No, they are expected to make a small gain in the case of Euro GBP to 85.50, okay, 85.38. They showed it as a high. Probably they may go to 85.45 and then start making further slide. So if they want to make the slide, understand the most important thing. What they have to do is gain more in the case of GBP, gain less in the case of Euro. Follow that. And then you'll know when exactly they are expected to make it. Today they will be simply holding it and try to uh, make brief upward stop. And they will not make big upward stop. And why? Because if they make a big upward stop, and, and those who are taken up buy positions will just book profit. In that case, when they drop, they will not come for long liquidation. At the same time, people will be afraid of taking the sell positions. So if they gain quickly, then the people might take following the technical. So they will simply hold it, make a brief upward stop and above that of the initial high and start making the slide. One Friday they have been holding near that of the high, low and they have been building sell positions. It was very evidential on Friday. Then Terry, how about Euro USD this week? What should we expect? I explained it. Euro GBB uh, Euro USD. I told you. So the low could be 1.3300. The high could be 1.3675. So it is on the uptrend. Is it clear? So, does it mean I can enter into that of the market anytime? No, I gave you very clearly, I've been told that early in the late sessions are ideal for entering into the market. Okay, you answered my question. Bye. Okay, uh, then Gregor. Turning multi year for CHF this year? Yes. So they have started doing it in the case of the regional currencies. So after doing it in the regional currencies, they will come to that of the crosses, make some extreme moves in the case of crosses. Then they will come to that of the majors. So at that time, you will find suddenly USDCH going above parity. Then we current USDCH of daily. Uh, would it be, uh, would it rise for the next few weeks? Yes, it is expected to slowly gain the levels, uh, but it will be patient testing. When the, how you can identify when you can enter into USDCH? You just look for the spread between the high and the low. When the spread is not making, becoming even 40 pips at the end of the day, like your session, then don't enter into that currency. So suddenly you will find they will make a very quick extended downward move and then reverse and make an upward move. How they have done it in the case of GBP. So always keep it in mind that they will discourage all the long holders by going down by about 100, 150 pips. After gaining small, small gain, uh, about 25 pips, 50 pips each time, they will make one quick drop for 150 pips. And then suddenly reverse after a data release or after a speech or something like that and go above that of the initial high and much more than that and stay above and quickly gain further levels. Then afterwards they don't look back. That is called extended downward stop and before making an extended rise on the upside. So when they make such moves, suddenly you find a panic reaction in the market Understand the players are clever and they try to make such a downward move and buy. You know, GBP came down to 1.52 from 1.53 area and went up to 1.54 straight away out of the data. And that is not a very significant data in fact when compared to all other aspects. Then subsequently they again to 1.55, not looking back, 1.56, not looking back. That sort of moves they will do it. 
and in the case of usdn also they will try to make a quick upward move watch for it and normally in the case of denominator currencies they make the one sided gains so when they make such one sided gains so you have to be very cautious you should not expect the either way swings only in the case of euro and gbp they make the either way swings and in the case of australian dollar they make the wide range swings and afterwards you find the denominator currencies predominantly show one sided gains no they gain 100 pips drop 25 pips gain 100 pips that sort of moves they do it another question bridge australian dollar new zealand cross to rise until end of the year after downward move yeah it is expected to slowly gain the levels uh, because aussie is expected to gain more when compared to the new zealand dollar now currently they are showing more gains in the case of new zealand dollar uh, then i dull dudley we have been in 200 pips range in the euro usd at month, all month do you think that this will continue no this time they will take it further high and 1.34 is considered as the recent high they are expected to go above and stay comfortably and continue to rise so no more questions so this is the expected market moves for this particular week and briefly showing the slide if you want you can take a screenshot otherwise the webinar is recorded you can listen to the webinar uh, recorded webinar afterwards uh, then note down on a daily basis what each session moves are and try to find whether they are really making it or not so that you will be able to understand whether it is dependable to follow then the range i have given it with regard to the uh currencies the four majors and two commodity pairs i have shown it and today's initial low and high and they just briefly breached the low in the case of usd cad and the high in the case of australian dollar all other currencies they are keeping it stable so the market reading is 330 we note down the initial low and the high and try to enter when they are making a brief down or stop and or when they are near that of the low and try to see that they don't breach the new low formed for more than 30 minutes we enter in and exit in the similar way when they are doing it in the upside always they handle only two currencies at a time so identify those currencies and try to enter into those currencies will be able to see quick profit making so it is not the level alone which is important look into that of the net change how they are doing it because if they are done more than 75 pips net change in the live market code page here this is a net change 75 pips on the downside or 75 pips on the upside more than that they don't reverse it on the same day keep it in mind when they drop about 150 pips in the case of euro don't expect it to reverse it on the same day keep it in mind that you can take a buy because there is a limitation and keep the hedging order to limit the risk and the next day they will reverse it if they come up to 75 pips they got a chance to reverse it on the same day but during the data release time and things like that when they make a quick downward move understand it could be an extended stop and when they stop cutting the new low for 10 to 30 minutes you can take a buy then immediately they will rise and that they do it before the event just 2 3 minutes before the event they do it so that is not with regard to the net change of 75 pips otherwise during the day you have to find out whether it is an extended move or the intentional move besides the stop loss then based on that you try to come at positions so i will be giving uh, again tracking the forex together market together web you know uh, on the 21st so at the time you can attend the webinar and try to find out how exactly i take the positions if you find that method is useful in tracking the market then you can follow that in your trading system i take this opportunity to thank fx trade for the facilities provided to present the webinars and also you people who have come here with the interest to listen to the webinar and trying to improve on your trading 
strategies. So I'll come back on 22nd and before that I'll be coming it on 21st. Uh, I'll, 21st I'll come and explain to you tracking the forex market together part one and part two. Afterwards Thursday I will do the regular webinar of Asian session live market analysis. Thank you one and all. See you on Wednesday.